Hello guys and welcome to another video. So from here we're going to try to uh, write down some code that's able to draw a triangle on the screen of course, right? So I want to start to define uh, some data here. Okay. So in here uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, G, oh, G, I'm going to create a float. Uh, well, we're doing this on stack because we're having small data types. I guess we can, it's fun to do that. When it's getting bigger, we probably need to move on to something uh, like a heat allocated memory, but let's do stack here. Float um, vertices, okay. And equals to actually uh, an array. Vertices uh, equals to an array and of course that will be having square brackets so i'm gonna go for a bunch of a bunch of uh, basic coordinates for a point so something like negative 0.5 negative 0.5 and then one uh, zero for the first coordinate coordinate of the first vertex of the triangle okay so basically, uh, if I do like a pen here, oh, pen, not substance pinner. <laughs> Sorry about that. So basically, if we, we have a coordinate system, right, that starts with here in the center in the middle, that's zero, zero, right? What's going on here is that that's the whole screen. Okay, that's the whole screen. And this is the uh, negative one and one. Uh, we're ignoring the z axis, which is the depth. We're only, only talking about the x and y, so z will always be zero in this scenario. Right? We're making things simple. So this is uh, this is zero one, right? And this is one one. You got the idea, right? That's the center of the frame. So basically, the coordinate we're typing in here is this guy here. That's uh, negative point five. Oh, sorry. It's somewhere in the in the middle of that. So again, that's negative one, negative one. That's uh, that's one and then negative one, right? This is x. This is y, right? So very basic coordinate system. So basically, we want to draw a triangle that's kind of like in the middle, all right? So what we're trying to draw is here, right? Halfway to the corner, halfway to the corner there, and then halfway to the top. So we're drawing a triangle that looks like this. Now you can imagine the coordinate, right? So this, of course, this is negative 0.5, negative 0.5. Again, I'm ignoring the z-axis, but z-axis is zero in this con in in all the coordinates, and that's gonna be uh, for the x is 0.5, right? For the y, it's negative 0.5. It's going down, right? And this one is. 0 for x and y is 0.5 right and then z again is 0 so that's our coordinates and that's why my first one is this guy right so we can go ahead and do that so don't need substance finner <laughs> sorry about that so here moving on from there there's going to be again negative uh, 0.5 oh actually this one is um, 0.5 for x and then negative 0.5 for y, and then 0 for z, right? Let's make them align better, right? And then eventually, our last one is 0 for x, right? And then for y, it's 0.5, and then 0 for z. So that's our basic coordinates for the three vertices. Okay, you can see now that's basically what's going on with those three coordinates I draw down with z as zero. So we're drawing a triangle like that, okay? However, this is just a an array of non-atom, right? Non-elements doesn't really mean much if we don't specify how, we, how they're working together. So we need to specify a few objects to contain those data and then also need to address what those data actually mean. So the object we'll be storing all our data is a vertex array object. We start with defining an integer as the handle of that. So 
this is on sign int val and then we gl create uh, gl gen lowercase gen vertex array okay we're generating one right and then we pass the address of VAO so the new vertex array generated will be using this guy as the handle so we can use this guy to reference that generated vertex array basically an integer like an index or a id uh, so and then we can then gl enable uh, vertex array uh, uh, or gx gl band yeah this band sorry that's not in there we'll have to band it first okay so banning that and then we pass in the VAL. Basically, we're saying, hey, well, we generate one now, we're gonna use it, okay? Uh, OpenGL is sort of like a state machine. So when you create something, you also have to ban it so that everything else after that will be related or associated to this VAO, right? So VAO is kind of like a big uh, container or, you know, yeah. So it, if we draw like a diagram, we create a VAO, and this one can contain a few things like the, everything about the data we passed in. One of them is called VBO, vertex buffer object. That's actually containing those uh, versity data we need to specify. So we need something like this after we create our VAO. So again, another thing called the VBO, on send int VBO, okay. And then GL generate vertex, uh, uh, generate buffer, I guess. And then it's kind of like also need to know how many we're generating, which is one, and then the address. So that's the VBO, exactly the same thing as the this LAN, basically, right? As LAN 26, we're generating another thing called VBO, which is kind of like part of what VAO can contain, can contain right? And then we can then do a uh, GL band buffer. Buffer, okay. And then it has to know what buffer are we banding with our VBO. There are different buffers when it's to G, uh, vertex array buffer, I, I believe. I have to do GL. GL array buffer, actually, that's that's what that is. And then the buffer will be, of course, our VBO, right? Okay, so we're banding that. And then we can then start to populate. So buffer data data right we're defining that data and that's when we pass in our vertices right the target is again our gl array buffer because that's what our vbo is binding to so we just passing the data to the same array buffer and uh the size right the how big is it saying we can just do size of vertices and then uh data data is basically vertices, right? And then the usage is GL static draw because we're not drawing anything that's moving, right? Uh, that's deforming basically. So we just make it static. Uh, so it's easier for, for you to calculate. Again, if you wanted to know the details about those variables, definitely do your research, right? But if I just try to explain everything, first of all, I don't know everything <laughs> and also, you don't have to know, and also like when you need it, you search it, right? So buffer data, we're defining the buffer data, but that's only passing in, hey, there are six, this is kind of like a vertex array, right? An array of, um, sorry, float array with none element, right? Even we passing the data, we haven't tell it what the data actually mean, right? We need to do that. So we're gonna say GL, um, GL vertex array, uh vertex vertex attribute pointer right so here i want to basically specify what does you know the thing we passed in mean right so we start with an index of zero okay so basically we're, we're, we're basically saying hey there's one attribute at the beginning right or have an index of zero in the data we passed in and its size is three and then 
three atom and with a float as the type of the atom, right? And then uh, size type and then huh it's not really index size should be asking for another thing why it's, it's not so ray pointer i might call it the same thing it's asking for stride so it's not asking for there should be an, an another thing that's asking for the uh is if it's normalized or not. I don't know why it's not. <laughs> so I should be having another GL files based on my memory. But it's, is it doing that? That's interesting. Okay. And stride will be size of, um, let me test, tap, tap this in first and I can do some uh, search for the, maybe I'm calling the wrong function. But size of, um, so that's how many bytes to jump over to search for the next one. And in this case, that's size of float uh, times three. Okay. And eventually uh, another thing is going to be, you know, how far do you offset before you read it? And there's going to be a void pointer cast it by after the a zero, which means we start with the first one. That should be the thing. So I'm not sure why this is not the one I'm looking for. Let me go in there and take a look. All right, so uh, GL vertex. Oh, actually that's not this one. That's glad. G, oh, actually this is defining. <laughs> so GL vertex array. Oh, shouldn't be changing that. Pointer or pointer. Let me search for that. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Vertex array for use. That's not it. Yeah, but that's the signature I'm looking for. So vertex attribute pointer. That's what I'm trying to call. Let me see if I'm getting that right. Oh, I think there's this that. <laughs> I'm, I'm having one more L in there. It's not a function. Anyway, so basically this is defining, hey, how do we make sense of this, right? So let me just go through this one more time. So in here, I want to define, hey, we're going to start with zero. Index zero, meaning that we're defining one of the attributes, right? The first attribute, you can keep adding other ones, but we have one for now. And this attribute contains three atoms, each of which um, is a float, right? So three floats, basically. And then it's not normalized, right? And the size of float is three uh, times three. That's basically meaning, hey, how far do we jump until we read the next one? So basically, if you have other things like UV and stuff, that will be all packed into one giant array. And then you maybe need to jump further than three to go to the next collection of vertices, vertex attributes. So this will make more sense when we have things like UV and stuff, okay? And this one, this one is basically saying, where do we start, right? We start with zero, the first one, okay? Read three, right? And the next one will be from the first, right? From the beginning, you jump straight, uh, floats, right? To read the next one. Again, start with zero. Okay. Uh, so again, this will make more sense later on when we uh, have more stuff uh, specified. Okay. All right. And then uh, we have to enable it, as I believe. Enable uh, vertex array attribute. And then let's see, uh, okay, the, the other one, attribute array. It's, there are two functions that's really similar. Uh, one of them requires a VAO, another one just requires an index. So this one is okay because we are already using our uh, VAO here, so we don't need to specify it in here. Okay, all right. So that should be the, uh, the setup for a triangle data. We have the data, we create containers for the data, we ban those containers so they're used. We 
right? We pass in the data here. We specify what this data mean, and then we enable it. So now eventually, what we do is we do a gl draw uh, draw array, and then we're drawing uh, the mode will be gl triangles. Of course, we're drawing triangles. And then the first one is zero, and we have three vertices to draw, right? So that's three. Okay, we can go ahead and run this. Right now, you can see we're indeed drawing out a triangle, and you can see that's exactly halfway to the, from the center to there, right? That's the same thing there, and that's the same thing from middle middle to the top. The same triangle I drew out in here. Alrighty, so that's enough content for this video. I'm moving on to the next. I want to try to talk about how we can change the color of the triangle. Okay, see you guys next time.